you want to hop in here, Wes, we'll see if we can get this going. There we go. Jesus. Okay. We're going to do the same thing. Do a best of three. See, uh, see what we can... Okay, the checkers last time were to stop burning double jump in neutral and keep in mind your percentages. Okay. I gotta focus though, because your falcon is good. There is, um, uh, I gotta dig here for things that you need to improve. Because the, the thing is, I can kind of tell what you need to improve on, but it's manifesting in just like a few specific ways. But I'm trying to tie it all together to find out what's causing these things. Ah! 
Ha! I didn't. I thought that was me dying for sure. Almost put my finger on it. Shit. You really a love throw. There it is. Yeah, yeah, okay. Hell yeah. Which game is this? They're just falling up here? Soupy though. Okay. Oh, I thought that was your last stock. I'm oh, bad. You might have had it, but the connection's getting bad again. No, like I, I saw, like, and you, you very well might have had it. I was trying to hug the wall to avoid exactly that, but it may have clipped me anyway. But I think I, I think I know. I think I know what I want to say. So last time your stuff was um, stop burning double jump and keep in mind your your percents. And I, I still see that there's room to improve on that for sure. I was seeing a lot of stuff where um, I got away with you being minus on hit on a couple things. Um, you were looking for combo starters where uh, there's better stuff to get. Okay, here's what I'm about to get to. Uh, one of the things I'm not super comfortable with is keeping a safe distance away in neutral. See. I think the underlying reason, I think your falcon is good. Your falcon worries me. But you, everything that you're struggling with here, I think is going to come from one main place. I, I think. Let me, let me cook on this for just one second and make sure I'm right. I think you play scared. It's, um, I think you're playing too much in your fight or flight, but you're choosing fight. You're not choosing like, ah, let me like evade from this. Let me dodge this all the time. It's coming from the same place. But instead what you're doing is at every opportunity, you're like, ah, I must kill him here. I'm, I, I don't want to deal with anything he has to offer. I'm just going to kill him no matter what right now. And that's why you're landing so many good um, kill confirms on me. Like, I, I see that, 
like I think I remember that last time. Like I was, it was impressed with how, like when you got your opening, I was just dead. But the thing is, you're coming at this from from um, a perspective where you're scared to play neutral. Like you, you're demanding to be an advantage state, and you're making sure that this happens. And this is kind of manifesting all over the place. That's why. Um, that's where I think your double jump habit is coming from. That's where I think your ledge habits are coming from, uh, and where you're uh, being blind to the opponent's percent is your your tunnel visioning on. I need them dead now. So what you're doing is like ah uh, like you jump it. You say you jump at me right, and you don't get the the opening you're looking for. Like my defenses are still looking pretty good, and you're like ah shit, I'm gonna jump again and try it again and see if I get the next opportunity. But all you're doing is burning your double jump at that point. It's okay to say, I, I do not have, like, I, I don't have the foundation here to get what I'm going for, and just settle after that first jump and, and recognize that, like, they just weren't open then. That's okay. I can I can cut my uh, cut my loss. Like, I, I expend a little bit to try to... Because when you jump at somebody, right, like, it's, it's a commitment. Um, and if they look like they might be susceptible to that, then you can go ahead and go on the strike. But... If they're not, then you have to land again outside of their threat bubble because they can try to punish you on the way down, right? Um, but you have to accept a small loss when you do that. You have to accept that that wasn't the right call and you need to kind of reevaluate your options. But you've learned uh, in, in that neutral interaction, you've learned that whatever you were doing that you thought was opening them up for a, a falling aerial or whatever wasn't quite there yet. So you can benefit from that. That's what you need to focus on, I think, is... Um, it's not so much that you are, you're like, ah, shit, it didn't work. I'm panicking. I'm going to jump again and try it again. I need him dead. I'm, I, I don't want to deal with this. Oh, what you got? One of the players at Ayuni said a similar thing, that I fish for combo starters and it's okay to go for straight hits. How you put it here makes a lot more sense to me. Yeah, that's what, I'm trying to go for, like, the root cause of it. Because, uh, going for, um... Like, fishing for, for your combo starters and stuff is a symptom, but it's not the cause. Anybody can tell you the symptom, but uh, the prime content that, that you come to me for is to, is to get a little bit deeper than that. You know, this is, this is what I'm um, hopefully bringing to the table here. It, it seems like you are... Like, I, mean, I think that's really it, though. I feel, I feel like you just play scared because you don't want to deal with their neutral. You're kind of like, yeah, like, it's okay to wait. And it's not just waiting. Like, you're still, oh shit, you're still gaining information is the thing. Like, the entire time that you're playing, shit, sorry, the chair has a little screw and it's, it's wobbling. The, uh, the whole time that you're playing, you're gaining information. I feel like against a shitter, you don't care about that, right? I feel like when you play a character who is, like, worse than you, or like, you, you fight somebody who's worse than you, that you go crazy, right? I'm sure you get lots of clips, you get lots of, like, sick, like, ah, three stock that bitch, easy. Like, Falcon killing it, you know, killing it 30, it's so good, right? That's the kind of, of player that I can see that you are. Like, when you get your opportunity, you can kill them, right? But when you don't get your opportunity, what do you do? You, you don't really understand how to open people up. You don't understand... Um, I'm mostly thinking out loud at this point, so let me let me try to... Because um, I, I don't want to just, like, you know, I'm not tearing into you or anything. I, I, I like your Falcon. I just feel like you need to... Um, kind of take it easier with them. But the, not, not like... No, no, that doesn't. That's not the right phrase that I want to go for. It's more like stop and smell the roses. Because the whole time that the game is is happening, you're playing neutral. You're getting information. You need to value neutral. Neutral is beautiful. Neutral is a wonderful thing. Um. Let's see. I almost want to. I almost want to interrupt this and show. I had a I had a game that I saved against. Um, I, yesterday I had a, uh, I was fighting a Kazuya, 
and he was the only one that I've fought so far that I felt like, oh, like this guy kind of knows his character. This is cool. Like I can I can learn the matchup from this guy, right? And it was the first time I had felt like that fighting one of these guys because they're still figuring out their biz, right? It's like day three. Um, it was day two when I fought him. But I saved the match because I thought it was just beautiful. I was going to throw it on YouTube later. I kind of want to just show it off here. Because the Kazuya matchup is pure neutral. And then somebody wins neutral and then that's a stock. Uh, yeah, that sounds good. I'm actually going to do that real quick. We can we can set up the arena again. I'll password you in and, and all that shit, so don't sweat it. But yeah, let me let me just kind of show the replay here, and I can I can try to like break down all the all the neutral that's happening. And again, it's just Wi-Fi, so it's it's a little bit of me just wanting to do cool shit. But there's always a little bit of that. Don't tell anybody. This one, I think. So I, I really just want to point out just the the, the beauty of the um, the neutral interactions. Art. That's already art. So the first thing I did is I know I'm a little bit faster than him. So I this is a couple games in, right? So like we weren't this isn't like button checking or anything. This is already neutral from the get go. What he's doing is he's establishing his space on the stage. He's saying, this is my area, but I understand that you have your own area because I'm faster than him, right? I can take this sort of... Kalos is a pretty big stage, so I can take more center stage, but I'm not rushing over to him directly. I'm, I am I take this, this space, it's in... Like, he's in my burst range right now. I could get him right now if I wanted to, and he probably couldn't react, but he knows this. So it, immediately, the first thing I do is I know my burst range is bigger than his. He's got like he can he can go about like. Can I mouse over that? I guess not. That's fine. But yeah, he's he's got about you know. I think I'm rambling at this point. Don't worry. This is not cutting into your your half hour. Don't don't sweat that. I even forgot to set the timer. So you don't need, don't worry about that at all. Um, but just the this little act, this opening, right? Um, I rushed in, put him within my burst range, and applied some pressure just by positioning. And he is moving within his burst range to, because he he can reach me a little bit, so I have to retreat a little bit. Like I'm I'm over here, he's over here, and I want to keep him within mine. And he's got to stay. He, he's like wiggling back and forth, right? And he he got me. So he, he wiggled a little bit too much, and I was I was kind of scoping him out, and he got the drop on me here, right? So he, he gets his first opening. He went ahead for a, a tech situation read, right? He went for the tech read, but he went for a hard call out reading tech roll in. But he that's okay generally because he um right, it was it was a bad move, but he take he did take center stage from that. He took the option that gave him center stage. And if it whiffed, at least he had his stage control back, right? So then we just kind of like... I can outrange him a little bit in, in these close quarters like that. So that's okay. I wasn't so worried about that. Uh, but did you did you notice that? Like when I was off the platform, I jumped in at him and then saw that he wasn't giving me any openings. And so I retreated back underneath the platform. He could have pressured that if he wanted to. But the fact is, I, I was in the air, and I recognized that I didn't have a clean opening, and I didn't want to commit to anything, so I just retreated and kept all of my resources intact. I feel like, in that same position, I can almost guarantee that you would have jumped because you weren't getting your option, and you were scared to come down and play neutral again with him. But it's okay to just reset neutral. Go back to the little bit of stage that I do have control over, and try to um, leverage that and push him back and take my center stage again. I tried to up tilt, and you know that you know how I feel about up tilt. So there we go. I got a little center stage, and I immediately squandered it. That's a bad habit. Ooh. Okay, see right there. I went ahead and pressured him because he was up up on the platform a little bit. Came at him a bit. Uh, didn't up air. Didn't up air, and then retreated and took my center stage back. Got my opening, got the kill, or got the got the knee, and and went out for him there. 
Go off stage against him, definitely. See that? The retreating with the double jump instead of the committing with the double jump. Like, I definitely did burn my jump there, but that's okay because I haven't been lately. So it's not a, a visible habit at this point yet. This is just beautiful. Look, like, he, he got me the first time, so I'm giving him a little bit more respect. But I'm still, like, walking in, and I caught him coming in at the same rhythm that he did last time. I figured out where the limit of his patience for neutral was. I figured out how long he... Because he's in my burst range this whole time. I can reach him. He can't reach me. What I have to do is understand how... Where his limit is. Where... At what point does he feel... And it's different for different players. But he, when you're in Falcon's burst range, you feel scared of him. You don't want him to come get you. So what do you do? You either retreat and give him more stage, or you come at him and try to surprise him before he can use his burst range. You try to enter, like, if you if you go head to head, you probably are gonna win. If uh, you catch me sleeping, then I'm gonna you, know, you get me. I get a you get an opening on Falcon, and that should be a stock, right? Um, so what your job is to is to be more patient than them but figure out where their patience limit is. Because when they reach the limit of their patience, the extent of the pressure that you put on them, then they will snap, and they will either give you more room, in which ways you can just repeat the whole process, or they will come at you. And that's why I threw out that F-tilt. I sensed that that was the limit of his patience. Not, maybe not patience, but he, like he was, he, was, he was stressed. He didn't want to play neutral with me anymore. He felt like he needed to commit to something to prevent me from capitalizing on some burst rage. He's in my pressure zone this whole time, and you have to figure out where they can't be pressured anymore. They snap, they buckle, they commit. And that's when I F-tilted him, got my tech situation, which already worked because he couldn't tech because he was pressing buttons thinking he was kind of intercepting me. And then I gave up stage control like an idiot. He definitely caught me lacking with that. I, I was trying to punish the re-grab there, but he was he was still in control of himself there. I know he doesn't have a great out of shield game, so I went ahead and got away with the second F tilt. SDI. Caught him mashing. Gave up my shit a lot there. Didn't eat shit for it, luckily. That was a very risky move. I don't know why I did that. Wi-Fi hit confirm. See, and I definitely should have ledge trapped in better there. But I mean, it's... Yeah, see, see how, like, he was pressuring me in the corner, but I was okay staying within his burst range. Like, that's the thing. You could do the same thing, because Falcon, you're almost always in Falcon's burst range, right? Um, and... There's a limit to their patience. But also, I can't go in like fist flying because that's approaching. And Falcon doesn't approach very well. He just pressures from that distance. So when he's cornering me, he can't commit either for the same exact reason. In that moment, he is Falcon. And I am nobody. Doesn't matter. Uh, in that moment, I am within his burst range. And I understand that I am in imminent danger of dying because it's fucking Kazuya. But you just have to be patient anyway, because the whole idea is you find out where their limit is. I'm in his burst range, he's in my burst range, we're in close quarters. And it just becomes a matter of um, who's going to snap first. But I was more patient than him, and he ended up retreating a bit, and I took my stage control back. A little bit of, little bit of footsies, a little bit of Wi-Fi movement. Okay, he caught me. He caught me um, mashing there, and then that sneaky up B is really good. I was actually diing correctly if I remember right there. Okay, got that counter attack there. Uh, I tried to snag him there, but I wasn't familiar enough with his trajectory to to get that SDI up. SDI up! Damn it! I ended up crouching as soon as I escaped, so that's something I gotta watch out for. Classic GNG shit right there. Uh, okay, what'd you say? So my limit slash patience is really low in those situations. In those 50-50s approach and retreat, I would just take the gamble on what I think rather than get more data. Exactly. Exactly. You're gambling. 
you're rolling, you're you're flipping a coin, right, for like a 50-50, like, I'm going to go in, if I get fucked, I get fucked, otherwise maybe I win. When you don't have to take a 50-50 chance, you can take a 60-40 chance. You can say, I'm going to wait until I have more information and scope out what... It's just data gathering. Uh, all you're really trying to do is see, like, is this the right moment to approach? Is this the right moment to try to commit to any of that? Like, I mean, I, I won't go too far into that because that's just neutral. That's the essence of neutral is you're just getting information to make it to where you don't have to blindly gamble on something. You can make the informed decision of, um, okay, now it's like a 70-30 because I've got a lot of information. Hey, yo, red 8, 118. Thank you for the follow. Um, but you don't have to take a 50-50 in neutral. You don't. That's the point of neutral. If you're making it a 50-50, then you're going to just, you know, die. <laughs> you're going to, like, kill... You're, you're losing your consistency. And anybody who's willing to play more patiently in neutral and gather that information is going to beat you. Because you're making a 50-50 guess on all of your neutral interactions. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Because you're not allowing it to um, develop more. You're not, you're not being patient enough to get your information from them. But if somebody is more patient than you, then their neutral interactions are becoming more informed. They're getting 60-40 chances, now 70-30 chances. Now they're pretty damn sure that you're gonna double jump off the ledge and they got like a, they're, they got like 80-20 read and then they fucking just like F tilt you and you burned your jump and now you're dead. All because they recognize that the thing is the more the more play the more patient player in neutral is also going to tell how you're playing neutral. They're they're going to recognize like oh really they didn't have much to go off of there and they committed early and that's just another thing. That the more patient player is going to store to like download and save for later. Um, so it really becomes a matter of. Not just not like oh like don't be don't be scared of them like it's okay to be scared of them but get your like download information not just not just be concerned like use every bit of neutral to get a better idea of of your opponent so that you don't have to be scared of what their options are if you can just learn them and, and know them then you're not going to be scared of your opponent Like look at the look at the um, like look at the look at the space like at the beginning of that stock there you know I tried to go for the up air and air thing but it's uh, frame it's like two frames away from perfect or no that's it's like that's a two frame window for it so it's it's tough on Wi-Fi. But I won because I had a stock to spare. Oh, I didn't. Actually, this is my last stock. Yeah, why was I doing that then? Take my stage. Fade that away real nice. Roll back in. Get my stage. Misinput that. And just cover that. So, I mean, you can kind of see the way that, that that panned out is at the beginning of every stock, it was it was just really steady neutral. Like it was it was um, nothing but like managing burst range, and then the whole rest of the stock was just spent in disadvantage uh, and until one of us died. Like there were there were a few neutral resets in there, but mostly it was just the start of each match where we were really scoping each other out, and then at that point. Always one of us uh, had some kind of an advantage, be it, you know, stock or percent or positioning. So you actually ended up having, like... Um, I lost my train of thought there, sorry. But I, I hope that those like little opening moments in neutral kind of uh, set it out for you.
Oh, I don't have the smash bot in my in my chat right now. It's okay. Let me get the cat out real quick. Yeah, just I'm gonna uh, let's just keep on playing, but I'm going to stop you every so often. Uh, I know that Twitch has like a bit of a delay, so you might not be able to hear me in time. So I'm gonna just start taunting whenever I want you to, to pause for a sec so that the, the thing can catch up, yeah. Um, but when I see you kind of panicking and not playing neutral, I'm gonna just gonna start taunting. Like, I'm gonna try to just show you real time when I and I feel like you're not, uh, um. Giving it its fair, um, fair download time. Oh, it's just a side note. Uh, this is why you uh, always do get up attack on a tech situation more often than any other option. Mango in the middle of a tra uh, training se session. I can't fucking talk. Oh shit! But up, um, up here on the platform there was definitely supposed to be an up B, but it just hit the C stick and flipped it first. That's really clean though, I like that, uh, that falling back here. And in situations like that where like one of you is high percent, then you end up not playing neutral there because you can get like some kind of invincible or like low percent uh, burst rangey type shit, you know? Because all you need is a straight hit to kill them at that at that point. So, at the start of a stock like that, it's actually not um, the worst thing in the world to to just kind of go for it. jittery again. Ah. I think it's okay to, um, as a, as just a quick aside, but I'll tell you in a minute. Get there in time. 
Okay, I can tell you now. Um, part of playing scared is kind of playing impatient. Um, it basically blinds you to all your situational awareness. So if, for example, you recover to the ledge first and I'm coming up behind you, there were a lot of times there where you could have um, just released from ledge and done a down air or whatever, and there was absolutely nothing I could do. But because you were just off stage, you were still playing nervous. And you were like, ah, I gotta get back on stage, back on stage at all costs right now. I gotta get back on stage. When you could have just killed me, honestly. And you get that, at that point, you're just gonna have to figure out what's greedy and what's not. But if you're just worried the whole time, like if, if you kind of get blinded by, by just... Uh, like, ah, I need to get back to neutral. Like, if you're, if you're just scared of your opponent like that, then it's going to blind you to some options. I mean, look at this. Like, you're playing so much better, like, immediately. to slow it down and stop rushing into things. Shit, missing put. Good, see? Like you're just, you, all you need to do is like, not, not necessarily slow it down because there is a time to go fast, right? But you need to uh, just play neutral instead of playing scared. Like, you're no matter what, you're going to be playing the game. You're going to be playing neutral whether you like it or not. So just learn more from it while you, while you can. It's night and day, man. It's night and day. It's so good right now. At that point, you were in the lead, so you could afford to, but I saw you, um... Oh shit. Yeah, that's just, that's just all on me. I always go for the platform, but uh, But I'm bad at the game. But I think you see it now. I think, I think something's clicked for you, for sure. All I have to do is not suck. Because when you're in the lead, you can afford to just not give them time to think. And if you're in the lead, that usually means that you've gotten some kind of download on them already and you can apply that pressure. That's how Falcon builds momentum. Yeah, it's it's just a matter of like being tense unnecessarily. Or, uh, kill setups when they don't even kill. Bitching. Oh, Poppy John, that was last week. You weren't there.
When you are scared, you watch yourself and not the other person. That's when I get away with uh, runoff down there and shit. They're telegraphed, but only if you're looking at me. Not if you're looking at yourself. Every time, every falcon jumps from the ledge when they're cornered. I thought I might get a roll out of you because I just covered your jump like that. That's fine. I thought you might pick a more defensive option because I was in the lead. God, I love a B. See, when you're in a pinch like that, you try to make these like big comebacks, like the big like nair off the ledge. But how often does that end up working for you? And how often does that end up furthering the other person's lead? Soupy. Ah, you saw about the double jump too, right? You see, you can tell whenever I'm doing it. Greedy, still. That was the that was the greedy. If that was intentional, there it might have been it might have been Wi-Fi soup. But that was the uh, the Nixie soft me off the ledge setup, right? Yeah. See, you're going for all these high-risk, high-reward situations to get your comeback. When you're behind like that, if it's because you've been losing neutral and falling behind in terms of, of just actual um, data collection, then that's going to be apparent. They're going to see that, ah, you're stressed. You're going to go for big plays now to try to get your comeback. People are going to see that. And if that's the reason you were losing in the first place, you're throwing away the entire game. You can play from a two stock deficit and come back as long as your neutral is good if you don't lose neutral you don't lose the game if you it, it that puts a different kind of pressure on you because then it's like ah oh, shit i got hit once the game is over yeah, that's not the case um when you're in disadvantage you don't have to directly challenge that. You can reset neutral. If, if neutral is something that you're comfortable with, if you like neutral, if neutral makes you feel safe, then returning to neutral is fine. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like a punishment. I thought dash tactics coming in to try to parry that. Ah, Kalos plots are different, you know that. Jump off that platform, boy, I know you wanna. There you go! See, you were behind, and you chose to reset neutral and keep me cornered instead of trying to, to finish the stock out right then and there. I love it! Ah! You're a good student. I won't let you have it. <laughs> what the fuck is that, Ant-Man? Are you on a keyboard 
playing. That's so good. That's so good. I gotta start doing that myself. Oh. How did that not catch me? So, okay, while you're in the training session like this, it's a lot to take, um, it's just a lot to take in. There's a, the, if trying to do any kind of improvement to your gameplay adds a layer of mental overhead, and you're going to play worse while you're learning this. That's okay. Uh, I saw you get it like really nice for a game and a half, and then it looked like you you were like, okay, like I think I got it, and I'm gonna just go for it. But you didn't quite have it yet; it hadn't cemented. That's normal. It, if it cemented in less than ten minutes, then you're a god. That's that's just not how that works. Like it, it'll take time to establish neutral as a good thing. It, it, it's just gonna take more time, you know. Um. Yeah, basically, that's that's the key takeaway. If I was going to say it in one sentence, is don't fear neutral. Neutral is good. All you have to do to not be worried about neutral is to just learn how to play neutral better. And if your neutral is better than the other guys, neutral is a victory for you. And then what are you worried about? Are you worried about winning too much? I don't know. Yeah, like, like, you have a lot of entrenched habits right now. So what you have to do now is you have to consciously apply this lesson actively. You have to sit down and say, all right, I'm unlearning old habits and I'm learning new habits. And if you catch yourself doing something that's not in the spirit of what you're trying to learn, you're not actively practicing anymore. And you need to take a step back and reset that. Even if it means like taking a 15 minute break, go, go take a walk. I don't know, eat a sandwich, some shit. Um, make sure that you're not... Like, this is, this is a key to active practice. This is why you have people with 9,000 hours in the game, but they're ass. It's because of a lack of uh, conscious practice. I'm terrible about this. Like, don't let me, don't let me try to fool you. Like, this is not, like, I'm not good at the game. I am just a coach. Um, if I practiced the way I coached, <laughs> I feel like I, I would... You might, y'all might know me from something other than Vex Falcon, <laughs> but uh, but no, like definitely, like what I'm saying is gonna help out a lot. Um, yeah, it, it just uh, just whenever you see yourself slipping, take a step back and reevaluate it. And you can, um, it doesn't have to be like within the game itself because it's just neutral. Neutral is universal. Like, neutral applies to every single game. Like, every single fighting game has the neutral phase. Like, that's that's it. Like, it's it's really universal. Um, you... What you can do is, even in your own time, even if you're not playing the game, you can still get better um, just by, by kind of shadow boxing. Just, just mentally imagine it. Uh, just think about it. If you move towards them and they retreat, think about what that means. If you move towards them... And they attack you. Think about what that means. Think about all the different extrapolations, and you can apply specific matchup knowledge to it. That's all fine. But really, all you have to do is just, in your own mind, you can sit there and you can think about the game. And you can improve just as well as you are on the sticks. Just imagine a scenario and imagine all the things that you can learn from that scenario. You can break any interaction into as many pieces as you could possibly want. Uh, there's a reason why all of my VOD reviews start off with the first one second of gameplay and then I pause and talk about that for 10 minutes. That's exactly why. 
you can derive so much from the smallest piece of gameplay because that's that's just what neutral is neutral is infinite it's the best part about a fighting game because there's no end to it you can improve for as long as you want to put in the effort uh, even if you're not great at combos or inputs or anything if you have old man hands as long as you can understand neutral you can enjoy the fuck out of this game any fighting game never be afraid of neutral neutral is your best friend as soon as you let that click then you're you're gonna, all these issues that you're going to have are going to melt away you're going to find new issues but then you'll know how to solve them because they all come back to your understanding of of, uh, of neutral whether it's um like if you have a bad advantage state right it's because you're letting them return to neutral <laughs> like if you have a bad disadvantage state it's because you don't know how to reset neutral you can just kind of come it's i'm waffling at this point don't don't mind me i'm kind of just uh it's it's a late stream i'm i'm a little tired today so i'm definitely kind of rambling more than i normally would be but that's that's kind of what i want to get at um just embrace neutral it's your best friend let's get like one more game in because uh, if we if we just run it like run it marathon wise you're going to fall back into habits you're going to get mentally fatigued and you're going to go back into exactly the way that you were doing so let's just do one more focused win or lose play neutral the whole damn game pressure that. Oh shit. Bad input from me. Oh, I missed the back here. Ah oh, shit. I buffered a spot dodge. I actually wanted to land it down to it, which I think would have worked. There's that same thing where it's like, I can make a hard call out because I already have stage control. And I, if I lose the hard call out, so what? I have the stage. Like, I have, I have room to make this bad decision. Nice. Ah, the ditto. Hide on that, I guess. Like it's okay to recognize when you've lost neutral. Like when you, when you, uh, the faster you can recognize that you've lost neutral, the sooner you can uh, minimize the damage. Caught me without a jump too. That could have been the game. That could have been the stock. I mean. Okay. I saw. Uh, I don't like that. You were you were definitely rushing in there. We we're at similar percents that the game is tied. So neutral was critical there. But you kind of rushed in, and it you you, you wanted the interaction. So like you know it's not all bad. But I definitely saw like um, that that impatience creeping back in. I'm different. Oh shit. <laughs> yeah, you caught my double jump there. I was getting greedy. Nice. 
One of my favorite things is to win neutral and then catch them retreating because they understand that they lost neutral. Yo, what up, spirit? Shit, I'm trying to dash attack. Yeah, these f tilts aren't, aren't uh, what I'm going for. That's unfortunate. Okay, now now we're we're just in bad hands territory. I'm sorry. See, you're in the lead, so I have to be the one to commit now. Good. See, you're getting it. You really are getting it. Um, go ahead and just spend, like, the next, whenever you play the game next, just focus on this for at least the next, like, I don't know, five sessions or so. Um... I pulled that number straight out of my ass. So just do this until basically it's it's uh, it's more comfortable to you. Yeah, like when you're in control of neutral, you can do the entire game. Like that's that's it. Like it just feels good. Like you can relax, you can breathe, you can see the game and see what it's offering you. It's giving you information the whole time. All you got to do is look at it the right way. And I think that was a real good session, and I think you're in a real good place. So definitely let all that sink in. And new issues are probably going to crop up after that. That's just the nature of the thing. So, yeah, getting getting neutral, uh, more second nature. Yeah, like once you figured out how you won neutral, then you can work on how you turn that into a one stock. But no, you're really getting it. Doing good. Doing good. <laughs>